this speaks for itself, right? So we are building a new fundamental material model. We're using something called PBR, physically based rendering. This is an industry standard that's been emerging, and it just makes everything look better. It also makes it much easier to build really cool custom materials. We're going to let people, our developers, upload the same quality materials as our built-in materials. It's going to look amazing. So this is going to be super cool. Our smooth terrain, it looks great, but it's been a little bit barren. So we want to have vegetation. That means having grass, flowers, bushes, little rocks, stuff like that. We want it to be customizable, configurable, efficient, procedurally generated with LOD, all that good stuff to make it work everywhere and be super cool. So that's coming up. So new avatars, we have a huge effort going on <laughs> with our avatars. This is really exciting. So we're taking a step back and saying, we want to have the most amazing avatar system in the world. And that means a few things. So it means rebuilding a lot of the core tech to be customizable, modular, configurable, redoing the way humanoids interact with the world, making it super flexible. and Skinned avatars. So skinned avatars means deformable meshes. This means finally we'll have <laughs> <laughs> All right. This was a prediction. It's coming true. We are going to have deformable meshes. It's not just going to work for avatars. It'll work everywhere, but it's going to look really good. Layered clothing is probably the coolest, most crazy stuff we've ever built. So it means you can take an RDC t-shirt, put on a Roblox jacket, put on a Roblox scarf, we should make those, and it'll all layer and look really good. That means you can build your avatar in really cool, customizable ways that are a lot more creative. So all this coming together is going to be amazing. So basically, if you're updating your game, oftentimes the game gets better over time, and our current rating system doesn't reflect that. It just shows all-time ratings. The biggest challenge with uh, us kind of figuring out what the time frame for ratings is, unlike other platforms where there are versions, you are updating your games all the time. So there is no like, it's not clear to us exactly when you need to trigger a new ratings. Right? 
So it's possible that like in the future, you can specify when you're ready for the next version of your game as the new version, and then that's when we will trigger a new ratings, but this is, this is in the future. Once upon a time, <laughs> once upon a hack week, maybe two or three years ago, one of our great engineers, Val, built a prototype of seamless teleports. So you'd be in one place, and you'd actually see the next place before you teleported there. So you could walk smoothly between places. We proved that it's possible, and this is definitely part of our long-term roadmap. It's not on our short-term roadmap. Yeah, so we are historically limited to 60 FPS. It's kind of how our internal system works. Uh, I'm not sure if it's against the rules to change this necessarily, but I'm sure <laughs> some devs have anti-exploit scripts that try to detect speed hacks and stuff like that. Uh, we do plan on fixing this for high refresh rate monitors, but it's a small enough percentage of the market that it never was super important for us to do, but I'm hoping that we can do this basically like next year. The, uh, there's this project called Futures Bryant 2.5, right? Uh, and part of this is improved reflections, but they're not localized in the sense that if you're in a room, you don't see reflection from other objects in the room yet. We recognize this as a problem, but we don't have an efficient solution. Global spaces. Boy, if there's one thing I've heard from every accelerator and every developer aspiring out there, space is expensive and hard to get. All right, we're going to get some for you. We're going to go around the world and try to unlock new spaces and new studios for you guys to work at. Whether that's accelerators in every country, we don't know. We're going to probably start up in Canada, move into Europe, who knows what's next, Eastern Europe, South America, everywhere in the world. We want to help you succeed, and we'll give you the space to do it. Focus groups, like I mentioned, more listening, more conversations. You should know exactly what's happening, and we should know exactly what you're thinking. We're going to continue to improve upon this through some official focus groups, remote, in person, and everything in between. Recruiting tools. I am personally overseeing a large portion of our recruiting efforts. I've heard finding people can be hard, which is crazy because there's so many of you. So we're going to build more explicit product tools so that you can find each other, recruit, build teams, and represent your own portfolio all on Roblox. Yes, thank you. <laughs> You'll be the first one to get invited. Uh, meetups. Meetups are fun. Turns out hanging out with each other is awesome. I thought we all just like to stay in a dark room on a computer like me. Uh, turns out we like to hang out. So we're going to be working on neat dev meetups all around the world. Might even have some player events so you guys can meet your fans and they can go goo goo gaga over you. Who knows? It's going to be an exciting future. <laughs>